Brand Australia is falling down. According to the Future Brand Country Index 2019, a global research survey that is held every five years, Australia's brand is not looking so good. Australia slipped seven places from 8th in 2014 to 15th this year. That's a significant drop. We can also see that the US is slipping in the ranks, moving from 7th in 2014 to 12th this year. The UK didn't do very well either, slipping from 12th to 19th. Although Canada is still in the top 10, it did fall three places. It looks like the big English-speaking Western countries aren't doing so well. This year's top 10 include Japan, Norway, Switzerland, Sweden, Finland, Germany, Denmark, Canada, Austria and Luxembourg. Just out of interest, here are the bottom 15 countries, with Bangladesh, Iran, Pakistan, Ukraine and Iraq rounding out the bottom five. Not many surprises there. So why did Australia slip to 15th? How is this rank calculated? In their report, Future Brand state that they look at the World Bank's top 75 countries by GDP and reordered them based on how survey recipients rate the dimension of a country's purpose and experience. Dimensions of purpose include value system, quality of life, and business potential. Dimensions of experience include heritage and culture, tourism, and made-in products and services. These factors are important in determining the rank as they are vital for quantifying the power of a country's brand. Brand is based entirely off perception. If a country is seen to have a low quality of life, or a bad value system, or a hard place to set up business, then this will hurt people's perception of that country. That is, it will hurt the country's brand. The report outlines four levers that are important in determining a country's brand. Lever 1. Quality of life. The new pursuit. Living richly, not just living a rich life. It's more important than ever for a country to look after the safety, well-being and happiness of its people, with an emphasis on all people, not just select socio-economic tiers. Lever 2. Environmental friendliness. Operation Rescue Earth. There's always a trade-off between economic growth, human well-being and a sustainable future. Unfortunately, many countries have a history of choosing economic growth over the health and well-being of their people. But there is some good news. Countries like Japan are taking the lead. Their big companies are all chipping in to put the environment first. Sony recently announced its Road to Zero initiative, where it aims to reduce its carbon footprint to zero by 2050. Toyota also has its Environmental Challenge 2050, where it aims to produce zero carbon emissions from all of its vehicles by 2050. Lever 3. Made in. Products and services. The badges of a country. A product or brand serves as a powerful symbol of social advancement for a country, and even influences a person's decision to work, live or play there. If a country exploits its workers, well, that shows in its products and ultimately hurts the country's brand. Lever 4. Polarizing politics. The knock-on effect. Perceived tolerance and political freedom are important. If travellers feel threatened by an intolerant country, then they won't visit and spend their tourism dollars in that country. If people aren't free to express their political views in a country, then they should expect a big drop in global rankings. So let's get on to Australia. What happened? This is what happened. Quality of life perceptions degraded the most for both Australia and the UK. In Australia, disposable income has been steadily dropping in the past five years. Homelessness is on the rise due to a lack of affordable housing, with prices increasing by up to 70% over the past decade in New South Wales. As Australian politics tends towards populism, potential visitors, investors and residents notice this intolerance and growing wealth divide, which directly impacts Australia's quality of Life Index. Future Brands Asia-Pacific CEO, Richard Curtis, spoke of the outdated ways of measuring the success of a country. He said, Historically, countries always measured by GDP, but we live in a complex world where there are a range of issues from healthcare to education, gun rights to the environment, so to measure a country by GDP alone is too narrow. He said that a positive national brand can boost tourism, business investment, and even encourage people to choose one country's products over another. What comes out in this year's study is the importance of quality of life and safety and stability which is essential if a country is to be seen as a great place to visit, live or invest. 
All the successful countries performed well in the perception of quality of life, but unfortunately, Australia falls short with its higher cost of living. Our values may be coming home to roost. When you add all of these things, it does dilute Australia's global perceptions. The challenge for Australia is how to take off the handbrake of the declining quality of life so we can be more effective as a country. This is all important stuff. The Australian government is willingly allowing all of this to happen. Cost of living is up. Wages are stagnant. The current government seem to be doing everything in their power to stop house prices from falling. We need house prices to fall so that regular people have enough money to live a comfortable and happy life. We should protest any cuts to Medicare. We shouldn't allow the government to hunt down Centrelink recipients using robo-debt. We should treat each other nicely and look after the environment, not our rich mining mates and faction leaders. As I've said before, Australia is slipping. We can see it in the world around us. The wealth divide is growing, democracy is eroding, and now it's impacting our international image.